Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watch One. Thanks for logging on. Today we're looking at a Rolex Oyster Quartz Datejust reference 17013. You can see this yellow gold and stainless steel Rolex Oyster Quartz Quartz Chronometer and buy it on our website watchyouwant.com. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Watch You Want Inc. You can also click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time to see our full listing for this watch with complete pricing details, high resolution images, and accessories included. Now, on my wrist, 6 and a third inches, 16 centimeters in circumference, the Oyster Quartz has a very distinctive look, feel, and fit. This watch is very much of the late 1970s school of thought that felt a bracelet, a case, lugs should all be integrated into one roughly cushion-shaped bracelet-style ensemble. Absolutely inspired by Gerald Genta, this watch very much takes after the aesthetic tone set by the 1972 Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, the 1976 Patek Philippe Nautilus, and naturally others in the genre, like the Gerard Perigo Laureato and IWC's own 1832 Jumbo Ingenieur. Now, the Oyster Quartz debuted in 1977 with a case and bracelet profile initially prototyped on the references 1530 and 1630 Rolex Mechanical watches. What you get is a 36 millimeter case that wears like a broad cushion and it's actually a larger watch to behold on the wrist. It has a bigger physical presence because of its breadth and the integrated bracelet, but it's actually more compact lug to lug than the standard 36 millimeter oyster cased Rolex Datejust. Now that watch is approximately 44.5 millimeters lug to lug. This one is actually 42.5, so it wears even more compact even though aesthetically the visual signature is larger. It's also wonderfully slim being only 12.5 millimeters thick, 13 if you count the Cyclops eye. You can see with the generously sloped case flank and fluted conical bezel, it does easily slide underneath the dress cuff. And yes, you are looking at a sapphire as all Oyster Quartz references, both Datejust and Datedate, were constructed with sapphire crystals from inception. Now, the way the bracelet wears is very different from any other Rolex bracelet because this design is unique to those featuring the Oyster Quartz case. Now, they're so unique that serial numbers and reference numbers for the bracelet are actually engraved underneath the links rather than between the lugs as was common practice with Rolexes from the roughly mid-1940s through 2010. Now the watch features a wonderful combination of polished flanks with a gorgeous thin polished bevel and satin finished tops and the, it's an interesting contrast between the high polish on the flanks which continues into the flank of the case and the satin finish also known as brushed metal on the top. The watch features a very well preserved Rolex clasp with evidence of mild polishing but not excessive. Very little definition has been lost on both the clasp as well as the case and bracelet assembly. Now the watch features a classical dial. This is one element of the Oyster Quartz that differs very little from its mechanical brethren within the Rolex catalog. This is an easy watch to mistake for a mechanical watch as long as it's not running. When it is running, you see that distinctive one hertz step, and I'm going to get into that in a moment and talk about how it's actually more like a mechanical watch than you might imagine. But you can see that this one has a gorgeous dial. It's almost a little bit of a champagne, and I have to say that the watch both in terms of the tritium luminescent material and the dial itself has distinct patina. The color is fairly even. There are some areas that are a little bit more intense and it's slowly changing from a sort of champagne to a sort of golden silver with little areas of varying intensity across the dial. All of the indices, the Rolex coronet, as well as the hands, are in excellent shape with no evidence of scratch, marring, or ill handling over the years. Now, again, it is very similar to a conventional 36 millimeter mechanical date just, but there is that logo, Oyster Quartz, between Rolex and date just. And what that means is that this watch houses the caliber 5035, 11 jewels. It features a conventional Swiss lever escapement. Yes, it has an anchor and it has an escape wheel. And as a result, it actually moves in 
one hertz detented increments, it has an incredibly crisp click to it as it ticks away, and it is serviceable by a watchmaker to the extent that even the first Oyster Quartz calibers, both the 5035 and the Date 8 5055 made in 1977, are still Rolex serviceable today. They are lifetime movements, and that's where this quartz watch really sets itself apart from the pack. With a maximum deviation when serviced of minus 24 seconds plus 60 seconds a year, these are among the very rare breed of calibers known as quartz chronometers. And with only 25,000 Rolex Oyster Quartz date justs and date dates made between roughly 77 and 2001, they are the very definition of rare, especially by the standard of Rolex, a company that today makes over 1 million watches per year. Moreover, they are thermocompensated and anti-magnetic. So in addition to their inherent accuracy, they have incredibly sophisticated compensation mechanisms as well as a trimming device that allows a watchmaker from Rolex to compensate for the drift of the quartz oscillator over time. This is a very sophisticated movement with immense conventional, traditional watchmaking content, engineering, and finish on the inside. You can see and you can own this Rolex Oyster Quartz Datejust on our website, watchyouwant.com.